Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And welcome again, everybody. So glad to have you here joined in for the Spiritual Rockstar Podcast today. Today, I'm just so grateful to share with you around the masculine edge. And what I really want to share with you is the opportunity to cut like a knife with that power we have, whether we're women or men, to utilize the masculinity edge we have within ourselves to be more sharp and effective in our businesses and really every area of our life and uh, talk about it because there's a lot of talk around the feminine principles and being yin. And I talk a lot about that. So today we're going to talk about the masculine edge and its importance and power in just a moment. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. So as we're talking about the masculine edge, I've really been thinking about this. I just have come off of vacation re recently, had some time. Uh, always reflecting, always a, a thinking, right? P partly a new thought leader in the world. And so one of the things I was reflecting on is how much change there has been when it comes to what defines someone in their masculinity, for example, as men even, you know, I just look at it, that aspect. So we've come in society. So we have this, what seems to have been just, you know, a hugely uh whatever patriarchal sort of you know society um and the origins of that and we could get into it um but that everybody really signed up for right if not everybody was signing up for it then somehow it wouldn't have been happening as the way i look at it anyway um maybe that's easy for me to say as a guy but that's how i look at it so we have you know just like drive, 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 make things happen. Where's that all coming from? Well, you know, mostly it came from men. It wasn't mostly women probably pushing things that we need to create more products like crazy and all that sort of thing, right? So it's been, been men, men in the, in the world creating things, manifesting. Well, again, more traditionally in the past, um, here in the States and, and other areas of the world, to whatever degree, you know, women are taking care of the family. You know, they're the mothers, they're the, 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 the people taking care of people in so many different ways. So, and that's just, you know, cookie cutter, black and white, you know, that we had such a, an agrarian age here in the United States too, where 98% of the population were, were farmers, a lot of women doing a lot of, a lot of hard physical labor, I'm sure on those farms. And then, and then uh, the, the, the men out there, you know, for countless hours, you know, work in the land where, you know, they have the animals or whatever, you know, the whole thing. And that was a whole different society versus now you got what 2% of 2% of the population are farmers and now 98% are doing all sorts of other things. That in alone, it makes a huge difference in our connection with who we are, our masculinity, our connection with the earth and, and, our, and our centered sense of connection with our masculinity. So we get farther and farther away from the land and farther and farther away from the most basic grounded realness of, of being here as a human being on earth through our physical labor, through being more connected with the earth, et cetera, it starts to change the dynamics. And as these dynamics start to change, we have more time to sit around and think about concepts and ideas rather than think about how we're taking care of our, our land and our family in the past, mo most people were churchgoers, a lot of church going, Christian sort of, of um, here in the US, a lot of Christ Christian churches and everything centered around a certain 
you could say patriarchal sort of focus for sure. And it's totally different. Now we've had a shift again to where we all have more time to think about life and what life is and what it's all about um, in a way that just wasn't be questioned before because we just had work to do on our farms. I mean, it's just, this is life. I mean, so now and there's more opportunities to get creative and really examine a very deeper nature. It creates a lot of things. It creates coaches, it creates healers, it creates psychologists, it creates, you know, consultants, it creates, it creates technology, it created countless different things. I mean, I'm just so many things that, that you connect with is what I'm trying to point to things you connected to and your parents, you know, probably in you know, most cases weren't farmers, right? Even then. And um, so you came from a whole different kind of background where things are different. And the disintegration really of churches has been huge. Um, again, not making it right or wrong, but the disintegration of churches has made a huge difference. Even if people are more spiritual now, a sense of community is more diffuse and not as, um, it's just different. So in most people's cases, not everybody. So that too has made a huge difference. And so we have all these different things making a big difference in how we experience our lives. So when we think about, like when I talk about like people, the way they've lived before Gandhi or you know, I talk about Jesus, we talk about historical figures, people in the past. They all face far different worlds than we face today. And so, so it's just something to take note of. And as a man, for me, I take a note was on this topic around masculinity and the masculine edge that I'm saying so much to my, even though I go to the gym and I, you know, rah, you know, all this stuff, I, I'm exercising and what I building my muscles and all that good stuff. Right. At the same time, I'm spending a lot of time where here with you guys, right. For example, and doing my coaching and healing work and spiritual work and everything. And within that dynamic, it's a much more yin energy. It's quite frankly, it's much more disconnected from the earth. If I'm it just is. I mean, I'm not sitting out in the, I'm not out like working in the land while I'm talking to you. Right? So, like thinking about how just either being kind of more mindless or really focused on that particular endeavor. So, and I don't mean that to me to be demeaning the farmers of uh, the past, but just like there just wasn't maybe as much to, to, to think through all the time. Uh, or the thinking was different. So, so now we have so much time to become anxious, depressed, um, out of balance. And so we have a lot of opportunity for psychologists, psychiatrists, healers, spiritual people to come around and help each other. You know, we're, so many of us have gotten into this sort of work and um, we're here to help. And, and even people that are in different work and they're more in their head. They're not as connected to their own centered essence and energy and with the land. So it's a different world than a lot of people used to be experiencing. And we have some great, you know, again, benefits. We all, all know about that part, right? The technology makes our life, you know, easier in a way, but in some ways we're not utilizing some of the energies we used to as men and women, for women, you know, I'm again, I live in those times, so I can only imagine, but if you have uh, bigger families, usually in the past, families would stay together. Women are there to provide workers for the land in part. I mean, I'm just telling you the realities. I mean, and they have a family. I'm not saying it's just a factory machine kind of thing. I mean, by no means, but but like that was part of it. We want more kids. So we have more workers for the land. It's just, so I think it's important when there's so much talk about the, oh, how wrong things have been, how things got out of balance is to 
rebalance things with the perspective of how we got to where we where where we've been and where we are and realize that life is vastly different and you have you know it's still because the men maybe are doing a little bit more and working the land right so the idea is okay i'm not saying every case either okay i'm just making a generalization because there's so much work for the women to do right with with kids i mean and all the other chores and tasks that need to be done on the farm so again i am no expert in that at that aspect but it just in my own reflection thinking about it, it's just how these basic things we don't we just don't think about them and how drastically all these things have changed even over the last hundred years even over the last hundred years so that's nothing hundred years isn't very long so all these things have happened this fast now we're in a space with all this technology and all this talk about uh, we've got we got too patriarchal you know patriarch how women were weren't treated you know properly at all i mean to me yeah from from sitting where i am today that makes zero sense you know what happened i mean i couldn't can't even imagine it right whether it's racism or women's rights and things like that that they didn't exist you know like uh, the way they do today so like all these things are unimaginable but yet you could maybe kind of begin to understand why these things happened you know if you think about the times and the way things were happening, why it might have been it might have happened that way, you know, what some of the the factors that may have created that again, it's just my speculation. I don't have people that lived during that time or studies for you, you know, that we all love to look for necessarily. But what I want to talk to you today is I want to set that as a context because. One of the things that I'm here to do is to bring channel messages and meditations and things like that. So it, 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 it's not the same as just taking you out into the land. It's a different thing. Like when I take people out to Sedona, places, you know, like this, the land does so much of the work for me that, you know, I can just step aside. I don't have to get in there as much with energy healing and all the different things, modalities and everything. The land, you know, these magical places on the planet can bring us into high harmonics and balance and integration. Whereas we've gotten so far out of that balance that this is one of the main things that we're, we're dealing with. So, I mean, just getting more centered in your energy and into your masculine energy as men and women, even with, it, with it, women on, from the farm, those, those are tough people, right? Those are hardy people. The women, the men, you know, on those farms, I mean, again, you know, this is my take on it, but for the people I have met over the years, that's a rigorous life even today. I mean, as far as I know, um, I know as a kid, I spent some time on a farm and these are rigorous people, okay? So um, my point being is there's a lot of focus on that work ethic too, right? So that's gotten into us. Boy, you got to work really hard, you know, to be able to Get the yield that we need to provide for everybody and so is that true today well it's not as true today now we can experience more of our feminine nature um we don't need to be uh, having so many kids we don't need so many workers for the fields you know right it changes the mindset for everyone it gives us more choice of how we want to live our life how we want to experience life allow ourselves to um to see men and women are able to take, reflect and look at themselves and see what's really going on for that. One of the things though we've lost again is that connection with the earth with the masculine energy. And so what happens with that for the spiritual crowd is that we get really caught up in our heads. We get caught up in being spiritual and spiritually connected, but not getting so connected to the earth. So we're wildly ungrounded. Many uh, spiritual people are very ungrounded. That's why they say, oh my God, the energies and I get pulled all these directions. The more time you just spend outside in the ground, in the earth, I were just to take you for a few days in certain areas of the world, 
whatever energies you're in, you're going to be much better. I'll tell you a story. I had a person. That's where it gets good, right? It's supposed to be about the masculine edge today. We're going to get into that in a moment. But I took the. We had someone that is very sick, very physically ill, very depressed. Came to one of the retreats. I'm not selling anything here, by the way. I'm just telling you a story. She came to um, a retreat, and she went from completely depressed, all these elements, to feeling very good by the time we were done, like just in a few days. Like, and it, it, it didn't last completely afterwards because she went back to same old patterns, you know. Afterwards, but she was she was um, I'm not saying cured in every way, but like she was largely better, like just by spending more time in community that was closer knit and with the earth and through the processes we we're doing and with the land deep in this magical place of Sedona, she was largely shifted for a period of time. And it's, it's, um, it created that shift for her, you know? So one of the things is we just have to remember is that if we're not naturally out there, if, you know, we aren't more called. I don't have one myself, but it's something I keep thinking about. If we're not, you know, working the land, I do work the land in my own way, you know, whether it's cutting the grass or doing other things outside, I, I do a bit of that, but I don't do like gardening and all those sorts of things. But if we're not getting outside, we're not doing things to get connected with the earth, that is definitely a factor in your mental health, your spiritual health, and your sense of wholeness within your whole entire being, not just the masculine energy. As it relates to the masculine, finally, I feel like when we're not getting more connected and even if we're doing like men and women doing dishes, you know, uh, vacuuming the, the, the house, I mean, that's a bit more distant, right? But like more earthy, uh, hands-on sort of things scrubbing a tub maybe is more where it is they're you know fixing something with our hands etc it gets us more grounded it gets us more into that present wholeness and there's times when you're working on something that things are working out let's equate it to when you are doing something physically wow you're scrubbing that dish we've all you know most men and women have done dishes right so Man, stuff won't come out. Gonna put, oh, gonna really get gritty. You really need to get in there. If you're gonna be, you know, um, you know, more, more, a little more of a passive yin, you know, I'm not saying yin can't be rigorous because it really can be very rigorous, very deep. But if you just use some yin energy and just kind of, well, whatever, come off eventually. I mean, never come off, right? Um, the, the, the food that's baked on there, if you're trying to get it out, right? um can use you know all of that you want and it may never happen so um whereas if you deepen your presence you you deepen your focus and you really put some more energy into it when i call it yin or yang yang either way all of a sudden you can see things shift right wow okay you seem really stuck or we have more determined sometimes it seems like it's re it not required in my opinion ultimately but it may, situations may evoke the sense of, wow, I'm gonna really get this dish clean. <laughs> you really get into it, right? Or you've got like a jar of peanut butter that won't open. You're like, no matter what, this thing's opening and you're just getting, but it won't open. And you get something for leverage, right? And all of a sudden, you know, you, you pop the, the, the sides of the lid or something and, you know, just do something smart and then it's easy, right? And we always are looking for that in our business. What can I do to make it not so hard and make it really easy and simple where I'm laboring at it, thinking I need to use all this energy. We don't really need to. So that's where the innovation of whatever you want to call it, in energy, whatever you want to call it, but we can uh, get a huge moral yield and we've allowed ourselves a world and society where we have that we can make things a lot easier for ourselves we could spend more time in meditation we spend more time um, maybe connecting with the earth in new ways if we wanted to you know but whatever it is we're called to do we can you know spend more time examining ourselves our humanity and ways that just we wouldn't take the time to do or just trying to survive or 
get enough yield to take care of all our people, right? So, so it's a different time, but that masculine energy of that, putting that stamp on things, like we've got to get this thing accomplished today. You know, we need to get these bales of hay, you know, wrapped up, it's getting dark. You know, we need to get it done now. You put that extra energy, that extra effort in or things that we more commonly could re understand is just, we have a deadline, right? We need to get this thing done. We need to get it done by this or that time. Otherwise, you know, it comes from these places where it's really was life or death. We get this done or we starve, either we do this or, you know, or else. So you've had many of those scenarios. And I think we've gotten to a place of many spiritual people we're so much into this enlightened presence of just be still, be calm, be at peace, I'm all for it. You know, nothing's changed there. But at the same time, when other energies are erupting, it's like a volcano inside us that want to be strong and champion something and just like, just no matter what, wants to cut like a knife. We need to respect that energy that rises up and allow it to be as supportive and powerful as it can be and not to judge it, not to say, oh, that's the old masculine energy, right? The old, the toxic mas masculine is comes from, again, we're not connected with our wholeness and we start stressing on things and worrying about things and um, to where we think we need to control things and we need to manipulate, we need to do all these different things that are, that are not just not true, just not true. And they don't come from our inherent wholeness, but there is a wholeness in saying this, well, boy, we've got a deadline, you know, either we need to get this done or we're going to get eaten by those bears tonight. You know, we need to create this, this fortress or they're coming tonight and we're all dead. I mean, those scenarios can exist in life for whatever reasons, you know, maybe there, there is a smart, easy, effortless way to manage those situations because you could just be present, look right in the bear's face and have, have a hug, you know, but ch more chances are more likely that the bear is going to eat you, right? So, but, you know, yes, the highest level of spiritual actualization, <laughs> sure. But it, as you're developing and growing, we just don't want to make anything, we don't want to make it wrong. We don't want to make our masculinity wrong. and. I think that there's been so much energy around making it wrong because of the problems with the patriarchy and the toxic masculine energy for men and women that we just made it wrong. And I'm just here again as another another voice, another person to say we just need to stop making it wrong. And when that a vis uh, eviscerating is the maybe like a eviscerating sort of energy, not to be unkind in a way, but but sometimes it seems like unkindness, right? So sometimes when we have a hard truth to tell somebody, we need to say it in a certain way that seems like it needs to come through in a certain strong way. Sometimes that's the way to communicate it. You know, it really is. I mean, I'll tell you another story. Um, th this is maybe not be the, the the perfect example, but this one, one, uh, one example. Like I remember having somebody that didn't want to sign up for a program of mine at a live event, my very first live event, and I had to, I had to literally like chase this person around during the event. It's more of a call of spirit than than me chasing them, but like I was chasing them around. They weren't willing to sign up for the program. Now I'm sounding like a really aggressive salesman, right? I'm, I'm finding them everywhere. I keep talking to this person. I say, you need to sign up for the program. The bottom line is you need to sign up for this program because I was like, you need to claim your greatness is what it came down to. And I'm going to hold you to that. And so when I was that strong and that, that commanding really in a way, and it culminated in this person literally having me almost drag them, you know, in a way, energetically anyway, not physically, drag them to our, our, our table, our registration table, right, that we had at the event, and literally just telling you, it's time for you to sign up. And I slammed a pen down, I told him to sign up for the program. 
And it wasn't a request. It was just, you do it right now. And he did. And he did. And he speaks on stages all over the place now, talking about that breakthrough, talking about this specific story and how it changed his life. Was this a yin sort of present namaste sort of way of doing it? No, I was utilizing whatever you want to call it. But for our purposes today, I was using my masculine edge to say, let's cut the shit. You need to claim your greatness. I see who you are. You can be successful being the coach healer that you want, or trainer that you want to be. Let's do it. And then he signed up. And the rest was history. It really was. So he gained what he needed from, from my support and went on from there. <laughs> it has impacted a lot of people's lives as a result. So without that masculine edge, the way it showed up, it wasn't like it was manufacturing and like trying to manufacture something, but it came through that way for, for, for him. And so if it feels like you're being of service for someone, you can always trust being in your masculine edge. So whether, again, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, trust your masculine edge. What I find is like we need many, you all have heard of polarity, right? So we need the, the, the dynamic of that masculine coming in to relax not only other people, like you can relax, like a man can relax a woman often by coming into a centered place with that masculine edge, right? All of a sudden, whoa, oh yeah, that masculine energy, I like that. And the woman just relaxes or could be the other way. A man's looking, uh, feminine nature is looking for strength from a woman. She comes in, she brings a masculine edge. You can do this, uh, go do it. <laughs> and he's like, Yes, yes, ma'am, right, <laughs> namaste, okay, or whatever, you know, but, um, and then just does it, right, does inspiration, so it can go either way, but it, but that, that dynamic, that polarity, the masculine can help relax the, the person into their, into the presence, really, into their female self, I want to say, I want to call it that, so, where there's just it can put you into your radiance. The masculine can do that. And so we have to just remember that we have that access to that. Now again, Archangel Michael and uh, for me, Jesus or whoever, you know, all the different kind of energies in the light carry that kind of frequency. And we can utilize that to have, to use that edge, you know, that sense of being, being edgy, being, strong, strong, very strong for something, being um, often what we call a champion for something. I'm going to stand for this, and I don't care if I, you know, the hounds of hell come, I will still be standing here, you know, until my death, if that's what it took. Now that kind of, that kind of, that sort of direction, like, no matter what, here I am, here I am. And even more so, perhaps, that not only am here I am, but this is happening. You don't need to be in a twisted energy with it. You don't need to push. You don't need to. It may, it may evoke some of that. It's possible. But it, it doesn't need to. That doesn't need to exist. But what wants to happen is that this, this is happening no matter what. And it's a natural thing. It's not, it's a natural thing when we're not suppressing it that just wants to come through. So my invitation for everybody listening today is just please trust it more. I remember one time I was in a group with somebody and she was just saying things that just were so not supportive of herself is how I looked at it. And all of a sudden something strong came in and I was banging, I was banging my fist on a table and kind of yelling at the person really and saying like, no, that's not true. This is what's true. And I quite frankly, frightened the person, but I knew it was right because it just felt like that's the voice that needed to come through. And I, I'm not sure what impact it had in this person's life in that case, but I know, I knew afterwards if it, 
she wasn't angry with me, but she she was shaken by it. And know if it shook something inside her that something was needed to be shaken up. And um, and so you know we had a nice dinner about and talked about it afterwards and whatnot. But my point is, don't make yourself wrong. I've made myself wrong. There've been other situations when I've come on strong with people, and they've come up back stronger on me, and then I back down and I made myself wrong. Don't do that. Okay, that's it. Like. Just don't do that. And if people come back even stronger, don't make yourself wrong for having come on strong in the first place. There may be something you're poking at, they just didn't want you to poke at, and then they, they fight you or, or they get upset. That's okay, but that doesn't mean that you didn't need to poke there, okay, so to speak. Like hit on their wound with that sense of, uh, an edge and being direct with something. Hey, listen, you know, that's a bunch of crap. This is what's the truth. I think about, again, one of my spiritual teachers, he's very, he's the most, one of the more feminine sort of energies of a man I've ever seen, you know? And even even he, he'll, he'll use the phrase sometimes, you know, you gotta cut the shit sometimes, you know? Like, <laughs> like it's just that sort of vibe. So when, when you're with prospective clients, for example, you know, in sales, like, hey, you know, either this is gonna happen or that's gonna happen. Either you're gonna move forward with this, you're gonna start seeing the changes you're looking for, or what else are you gonna do? You know, like a lot of people make these things wrong, these approaches wrong, they're not wrong. So that's what I'm here to say is they're not wrong. Now, do you need to be th that way all the time? Do you, is it, is it a concept and not now we're going to act from this program or whatever? No, but when it comes up and it feels like it's appropriate, it feels true for you is not to repress it. So hopefully this is making some sense to you, but sometimes we need to do things that help us to bring that energy more consistently. Again, maybe some, for some people like myself, lifting weights can help with that or listen to some heavy metal music or, or whatever, doing some hard physical labor um, physically. I don't care what it is. I mean, some people want to bring out their Hulk and uh, bring out a wiffle bat, bat and s slam a pillow or something. I've had people tell me to do that before in the past. I don't think I ever really did that one. There's all kinds of different ways. Get out a hammer and smack something, you know, really hard. It feels good. I think it feels good for, again, men and women. Bring some of that what we just label as masculine, powerful energy. And sometimes there's time to, um, as we say, blow some stuff up, right? And so sometimes that's true. Look at nature, right? They always say, look at nature, look at nature. Things get blown up, things get eviscerated, things get blown up. Sometimes that's how we are meant to be. It's okay, okay, it's, it's okay. I'm giving you the green signal. So be more powerful when you have a message and I've seen messengers have a strong, powerful, confrontative, even really message for the world. And then they're trying to be nice about it. It's like, you can't just be nice about it. You have to bring it a strong way. People aren't going to listen. They're going to be like, I don't know if you're that into it. Therefore, I don't know if I'm into it. Right. So, so you have to bring your passion you have to bring that edge. I'm just calling it the masculine edge today because we need to get back into this healthy masculine energy. It's like we're working that land, right? Like working that land, bringing that, oh, we need to get this job done. We all have done that. Men and women have been in those places, working that land, doing that sort of, sort of using that masculine, empowered masculine energy. We need to bring it back as an energy dynamic and we can bring it back in a big way and see much more wholeness and wellness in our society. Whereas, you know, the, the part that feels vulnerable, the part that feels insecure will be start feeling secure. The feminine side inside, you know, the polarity inside of you, when you bring the strong masculine, the, 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 the insecure child, you know, inner child or whatever you want to look at it as can feel its wholeness, right? can feel its, its, its deeper nature. 
because the masculine's got a cover. The masculine's coming forward. And then there is a place where all that disappears and we're one with it. We've experienced the oneness with everything and all that. Some people just want to focus on that. That's fine. But I'm here to share something that I just find to be universally a dynamic that's going on, no matter how high your spiritual actualization is, that these dynamics do exist and that we don't want to suppress that, that wonderful masculine edge that we have inside of us, all of us, because there's so much talk about the feminine. We need to, we need to continue to remember the power of masculine energy that women and men have used throughout all the millennia and um, to, to come back to it. Because otherwise it'll show up as toxic, dark, masculine energy in some way or passive aggressive, right? All that nonsense. So we start, you know, or addictions or, you know, just, just tamper, you just spend your life tampering it down, taping it down or whatever, tampering it down. Just, that's no way to live. It's not a vibrant life. So you need to find a way to let it rock and roll. Like we're talking about here. So hopefully this has been specific enough for you to help you understand that yes, you can bring this energy that I'm sure you're aware of. You can evoke it through um, doing different practices that help evoke it for you, whether again, it's hard physical labor, um, playing heavy metal music, <laughs> rock music. I don't care what it is, but what gets you in that, that stronger masculine energy, you know, and then what, how can you start channeling that into your purpose, into your businesses? You know, man, how, how can I utilize that to be stronger in my messaging, stronger in my sales, stronger in my marketing, I'm willing to use my sense of strong masculine edge and my persuasiveness, not only a yin energy. So, okay. So. Consider the ways you can utilize this, right? If you want really practical, come up with two or three ways to bring out more of that strong masculine energy into your life. Then come up with two or three ways you can then channel that into your business and purpose. That alone can make a huge difference, it can make a gigantic difference in your business. So, all right. So uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and um, do a quick prayer on this. So if you could join me, take a nice deep breath. In through your nose, up through your crown, up, up through your higher self, up through love, light, source, energy, up into the all and all. And as you exhale through your mouth, this energy come back down through your higher self, down through your crown, chakra, down through all your chakras, through your body, through your field, down through your feet, down through your root chakra, down to the core of the earth. As I speak these words, and the I am, for everyone to listen to my voice is recognized. God, love, light, source, spirit is all there is. I'm grateful for the power of source within me as guiding me, as nourishing me, provides for me from the, the infinite. And I know that that infinite power includes the sense of the divine masculine and that masculine edge. And I'm willing to feel that as I allow that energy to deepen my sense of connection with my feminine self as well. Within this dance of this seeming polarity that it's all one, I get to experience more of the fullness of who I am and be most alive, potent, and more effective in sharing my message to rocket in the world the way I'm meant to, to support those that I'm here to support in the world through my message, through my services, through my brilliance, through my magic, through the world changing thing that I'm here to do and to share and let it be well and flourish and prosper in the highest level on every level. So, so I'm letting this be so. I'm grateful to put a stake in the ground for it. I am fully supported in my masculine energy from source that I, I have it for a reason. And I'm grateful to let it rock from there, knowing that I'm claiming more of my full wholeness in all of it, knowing that it's here for me to, to claim and to accept and to integrate right here and right now, letting it prosper me in every single way. So I let it be so, I let it be done. Thank you, God, and so it is. Okay, everybody. All right, so, so glad to have shared with you. Uh, again, if you want to experience more uh, with me, go to Rock Your Sacred Purpose Facebook group. I do Facebook Lives there. Most every Monday at 3 p.m. Central. That's where I'm at 
you know, chit chatting as much, nearly as much. I do a little bit of that. Then I get right into doing energy scans and some channeled messages for you. So if you go there, I can help support in seeing you and, and uh, champion you uh, in every single way. So go to Rock Your Sacred Purpose group, um, answer the questions. And uh, of course, if you're fit, we'll let you in. And um, again, you can go to YourSacredPurpose.com and check out everything there, including that meditate, make money meditation, and so much more. So anyway, so glad, uh, grateful to share with you today and uh, look forward to continue to share with you. So keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till next time, everyone. Goodbye for now. For listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.